So my challenge now is to uh, try and get us back on track. Uh, brilliant presentation, very insightful. Uh, I think the next slide is uh, you can go on to Slido and you can rate the presentation. So uh, I think, Dirk, you said it would be the best presentation of the day, or Alex said that. So looking forward to seeing those results later. Um, so uh, I'm between uh, you and coffee and uh, raffle draws and, uh, and driving that we got over the coffee break. I think we, we've talked already a lot about digital, and uh, it doesn't matter who you are or what you do, there's no escaping that we live in a digital world. And it isn't just about using digital technology in the workplace. It's also, it's all around us, right? We use digital technology in our home life, our personal lives too. And, uh, and certainly my children have, uh, have been uh, great examples of that. Uh, my son from an early age being able to go online and, uh, and happily... Uh, download films to watch uh, uh, from, uh, from Amazon and, uh, and order things to turn up at the house. And, uh, uh, and, and I would uh, not quite so gladly pick up the tab, but uh, it was all made very easy for him. So Britannic, what do we do? Well, we're really here to work with customers to look at a whole range of different options that are out there. And we focus on solving business problems. We look at... Uh, how and where improvements can be delivered. We look at how we can accommodate change because change happens all around us and it gets forced upon us as well. You know, we have to react to change. And of course, the big one is how do we meet the opportunity for transformation? How can we help customers do things differently? So we've got a lot of great technology, a lot of great insight, a lot of great people that work closely with customers to help to review the options, to help to build uh, pilots and scenarios that actually uh, can be evaluated and, uh, and taken forward. It is about how we can help to not just streamline operations, but also achieve digital fueled growth as well. So it's, integ it's integral to how we function in the modern workplace. It is crucial to understand how best to harness it to, importantly, empower people. So technology should very much help people, not hinder them. And when we're looking at the design, we need to be considering these things. So today, our goal is to share with you the art of the possible, give you an insight into what could be done. It is about how do you move through this changing world without having to chain, make long, drawn-out and costly infrastructure changes. We've talked about a lightweight approach. We've talked about integration. We've talked about uh, plugging different technologies in into a framework in existing environments to help to take you forward into the future. And I'll share some of what we're doing uh, shortly. So whether you're the innovator, the transformer, or the improver, in our role as the enablers, we can help. We can help with our experience. We can help with our partnerships, uh, some of which you'll get to uh, uh, see today, both on the stage but also in the exhibition. But we can also help with our own technology. You know, we're an uh, uh, over 30-year-old uh, business. We've got our own development team and uh, a lot of insight into this marketplace. And we work with customers to design solutions that very much help to empower and support this changing world that we're going through. Whether it's helping to improve the experience of your colleagues, whether it's your suppliers, your business partners, or whether it's your customers, you know, we have to look at how technology is designed and delivered from a people perspective. Great stat up there, you know, customer experience is very much seen as, uh, as the, the battleground of the future. 89% uh, of all organizations are looking to compete based upon uh, customer experience. But it goes way beyond that. Good customer experience really helps to create happy customers. Happy customers will buy from you. They will recommend other people to you, helping you to grow the customers that you work with and you serve. Happy customers 
will create a position where you have happy staff and happy customers take less time and cost to support as well. So who wouldn't want to focus on customer experience? And the winners of today and tomorrow will very much focus on how uh, services are delivered and consumed, how it's done in a seamless way, and how you can expose new value to your customers to differentiate in the marketplace. As we've heard, there's a lot of uh, uh, change in the worlds in which we live. I think uh, Alex's uh, uh, stats uh, around uh, the number of Fortune 500 companies that don't exist today uh, since the year 2000. There was a recent um, uh, survey across Fortune 500 uh, uh, CEOs, and 73% of them said the, the, the biggest thing that keeps them awake at night is the rapid pace of technology change. Yeah, that's something that we must consider. They are most worried about small and medium agile organizations or new startups taking their customers and markets from them. Uber, Airbnb, Netflix, and Amazon are great examples of this. You know, organizations that have appeared and had explosive growth and impacts within the markets that they operate in. Airbnb is valued at more, higher value than Hilton Hotel Group, yet it owns no hotels. Uber, at its height, was valued at $80 billion, but it has no taxes. And people such as Netflix and Amazon have made it so easy to watch TV and films through online and digital models and they were uh, the cause of people such as blockbusters uh, disappearing off the face of the earth. You know, they didn't react to change. They did not see this coming and didn't react uh, to what customers wanted. So this digital transformation and agenda is being forced upon us all. Whether we like it or not, this change is happening. And to create the winning blend, it's important to understand as I said, from a, a, a people perspective, customers and uh, users within the business, you know, how can they engage with organizations? How can they communicate and interact with each other? How are they served? How are they empowered? And organizations of all sizes today are re-engineering how they operate using digital platforms, self-service, automation, AI, to create this winning strategy for the future. So I've got a number of uh, uh, takeaways uh, in my presentation. Um, there is some commonality between my final slide and, uh, and uh, the BizView final slide, and that is a complete coincidence, because I, I didn't look, I can assure you. Um, so what's important? Buy-in. You know, it's important to get buy-in from the board as well. You, know, you need that senior stakeholder involvement and sponsorship. If you're going to change the culture of the business, you know, the senior people in the business need to sign up for it. It's important to get started. Don't stop. Keep going. Keep that momentum going. Very much agree. Don't be afraid to fail. But also the importance of a flexible and adaptive architecture. You know, things are changing all the time. If you cannot accommodate and incorporate change is going to create a problem. Involve people early. Involve people within the business, but also, most importantly, involve customers early. And be ready to adapt to change. And when you embark upon this journey, it's important to understand how you will be able to scale. So have a view of the end, the end goal in sight that you're working to. Of course, over time, this, this, uh, this, this, this uh, horizon that you're working to is going to continue to shift. But you know, what's the initial uh, goal that we're working on, and how are we going to hit scale? The way in which people are communicating is changing as well. You know, we're seeing more and more use of digital channels. There's a big increase in web chats. In fact, by 2023, it's thought that 71% 
of all organizations will be offering web chats as a channel uh, uh, to their customers. Telephony uh, use uh, has declined a little over recent years. 64% of all interactions uh, are thought to be, uh, uh, will be telephony by 2023. So whilst there's a decline, it's also interesting to see some of the other uh, stats that the average length of call is actually increasing. So we've gone from uh, 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 3 minutes and 40 seconds to just shy of uh, 6 minutes over the last 15 years. So an increase of 62%. Now if we think about it, if people are using digital channels and they're doing self-service, when they do need to talk to someone, it is a fair chance that that conversation is going to take longer. So it's not unsurprising. The cost of communication needs to be considered as well. So we do a lot of work with customers looking at the opportunities for automation. And it isn't a case of automation to replace people. It's a case of automation to help to support and augment uh, people in the workplace. It is also about helping your customers serve themselves as well. You know, look at the range there from between £3.37 and £4 uh, for a live uh, person interaction through different channels. So it's expensive compared to uh, automated uh, uh, interaction methods, whether that's chatbots or conversational AI or IVR or speech-enabled uh, services, whether it's uh, portals and platforms. Digital process and automation definitely saves money. Interestingly, it also helps you scale the business without adding to headcount. And I think we should consider that there is a great opportunity for a blend. So we can start a conversation via automated routes and then we can move it to people as and when required. There's a really great example where uh, it's in the show guide towards the, the end of the show guide where we've worked with uh, Stockport Council recently and uh, we've helped them introduce a, a, a conversational AI uh, chat system onto their website. They were getting inundated with calls into the call centre asking about uh, the same type of uh, uh, inquiry time and time again. Uh, you know, when's my bin going to be collected? And, uh, you know, they were, what they've been able to do is to reduce the number of um, contacts into the contact centre that people were dealing with by 3,500 a month, yeah? So instead of, imagine, sat there having to have these, the next call, one after another, after a bank holiday, when's my bin going to collect, be collected? When's my bin going to be collected? It's not very exciting. Uh, it's not adding a lot of value. And by implementing this technology, they've saved up to 95% of the cost in dealing with those types of inquiries. And in fact, they're now scaling, introducing other services and automating this too. So our approach as enablers, as I said, we've got a lot of technology at our disposal, you know, many, many years of experience, and we're working on these types of projects with organizations already. We've got a great partner ecosystem, and it is about extending advantage and value to our customers. It's about how we can integrate into existing systems, both operations and infrastructure. It's about re-engineering that customer interaction, irrespective of the method or channel that it comes in. How do you support it? It's about taking out waste, unnecessary steps and cost and focusing on how do we improve the customer experience and how do we improve the experience of the users within the business. We work with people to remove complexity, help not hinder, simplify operations, accommodate choice, because customers want choice in how they communicate and interact with you. And it is important as a systems integrator we're able to bring to bear new innovation, new technology, and incorporate that into your existing environments. So last year I talked about our vision of this uh, digital framework. I talked about how 
Um, we're seeing more and more people that are using mobile uh, devices as the device of choice. How people use um, the website uh, as the primary uh, search and research tools. And of course, what we're seeing now is the emergence of uh, smart speakers, smart devices, and uh, IoT sensors. So with our digital backbone, our framework, our Be Connected uh, framework, we're delivering um, AI orchestrated uh, power and interaction. We're able to plug in a whole range of different communication methods. We're able to accommodate change. So if a new one comes to the fore, we're able to test, incorporate, plug in, and extend that as an option for, for our customers. We're able to make decisions based upon data insights as to how we route, how we deal with, and how we respond to these, uh, these requests. Whether we do that all automatically, or whether we take these interactions and we look within the, uh, the data sets that we have and we create a matching service where we're connecting the right customer to the right person at the right time in the right way with the right tools to deliver an excellence of service. So we're using very, very much smart technology to help to drive change and improvements in the way in which we're working today. And it is about personalizing service. It is about adding value in the way in which we operate. So in addition to this Be Connected framework, um, you know, we're, we're, we're working a lot within uh, cloud environments. And it is about how do we extend the value of the investments that we've made in technology across to the market. We've completed our move to the next generation core. So this was very much about improving resilience performance, scalability, but also extending the connection into that environment. So we've built this application framework out where we can deliver technology as a service to customers. So we don't want to just limit it to the people that we're delivering an end-to-end -end stack to or, or, or a network to. We also need to be able to extend it through interconnects, through other network providers into existing wide area network uh, environments or connections into other data center providers. Because by doing this, we can start to extend a lot of this new value, new technology, whether it's AI, whether it's WebRTC, whether it's uh, some of the smart apps that you'll, uh, you'll get to see in the presentations later on. And it is about augmenting the unified communications, the contact center, solutions that our customers already use today. So we've worked hard to integrate these technologies together so we can deliver a true unified experience for our customers. We continue to see a big move to the cloud where we, we work with customers to not only take their telephony, unified comms and contact center environments to the cloud, but importantly today, start to expose a lot of this new technology and functionality uh, that we've talked about. We've adopted the same approach ourselves. So again, last year, I talked about, uh, I'm just clicking and it's not moving. Uh, I talked about our own uh, digital platform that we've created to overlay uh, our next generation uh, SIP service, NetX2. This platform is live uh, and it's really, uh, about creating additional uh, functionality for customers, uh, self-service, control, extending data insights into uh, these interactions, and also creating an environment where, as we move forward, we'll be able to extend more and more functionality to meet customers' demands and requests. Some of the initial functionality that you'll see uh, later on in one of the tech talks is uh, ability to build call flows, create uh, white lists, black lists, uh, and a wealth of data uh, at your disposal that you can go and search across our uh, SIP data. Through joint development and, uh, and innovation across uh, Britannic and BizView uh, teams, what we've been able to do is to extend further uh, functionality. So um, within the call flows, as an example, we're able to use uh, API lookups, 
uh, to look within uh, databases and information and take routing decisions dynamically at exchange level based upon uh, different f uh, segmentations of customers and profiles. So this is changing the way in which calls are routed uh, and how and who they're delivered to based upon what it says uh, within the data, the data insight that we have. Uh, there will be a tech talk, I mentioned that, so uh, my colleagues uh, Alex and Pete uh, are delivering a uh, tech talk on, uh, it's called Making the Most of SIP Services upstairs later on. Uh, it's in the show guide, so uh, they will be providing a live demo of, uh, of this portal. So you know, if you get chance, please go and have a look and see the power that we can extend. So taking that technology that we looked at, what we're then able to do is to look at how we extend it further for customers. So Alex talked about different uh, codal assets uh, at our disposal. So within our platform, through a simple query tool, we can go through and uh, interrogate our data. We can interrogate our, our SIP data. We can create reports. We can uh, schedule, distribute. And of course, then what we can do is we can start to look at uh, these custom dashboards. And we've taken that into a position where we can expose other data sets for customers. So whether this is a, uh, a MITAL or an Avaya contact center database, whether it's a, a CRM database or our SIP exchange or other data sets, what we'd be in a position to do is to provide a query tool where you can uh, analyze the data, you can bring information back, and you can very quickly and easily convert it into a dashboard view so that when you log back on, you've got the information that you want to see to keep track of the things that you want to know about for the business. And of course, this can be extended further into customers uh, via the web. So we can actually create an environment where, as we're doing ourselves, we're extending the control and ability for customers to run their own queries on their own data and actually create their own custom views uh, and dashboards as well. Okay, the next slide, um, so looking at uh, uh, really the change that we're seeing in the marketplace, so a lot of people are looking at automation, and there's a lot of technology in our, uh, at our disposal that we can help with that, and then we also have the, the, the extreme where people are focused on customer experience, how do we personalize the service that we deliver? So what can we take away, the Stockport example uh, of um, three and a half thousand interactions that can be dealt with automatically to start to free people up to focus on delivering value for the customers in the interactions that they have. But it goes further than that because it isn't just about um, automated interactions or, or intelligent routing based upon data and conditions. It's also about presenting information uh, to those users when they're talking to your customers to make it easy for them to engage, make it easy for them to add value. You know, if we're looking at information across a whole range of uh, different databases or back office systems, what are the bits that people need to know based upon that inquiry? And uh, one of the great technologies that uh, you'll get to see uh, later on is uh, something called Smart Forms, which provides a consolidated view across different uh, data sets based upon the nature of that inquiry. Very, very clever. So Gillen, uh, we've heard his name mentioned already. He's uh, delivering a tech talk on the, uh, the ROI of DX. So again, uh, within there, we're going to be demonstrating this technology. We're going to be showing how we've integrated into both Mitel and Avaya uh, platforms. Uh, so no pressure, live demonstrations. Uh, please do go along and uh, see it in action. So, finally, we step back in time. It's a, very aptly, it's a, it's a rainy day. There's a man stood on the side of the road. He's got his phone. He presses a button, an app appears. He types in his location. He doesn't have to do anything else. A taxi has been ordered for him. He gets to see how long that taxi is going to be before it arrives with him. And after his journey, he doesn't have to exchange any cash. 
all of that is dealt with for him. He's not had to phone a taxi company. He's not had to look at uh, numbers and who's available in the local area. But it's not Uber. It's 2008, and this man is using an application called Taxi Magic. Who in the room has heard of Taxi Magic? Yeah, nobody. I'd never heard of Taxi Magic. These guys were the innovators. These were the forerunners to Uber. These were the people that created the first taxi hailing uh, application that was out there. But one year later, along came Uber and took their market. They disrupted that market. But how did they do it? You know, what was different between the first application and Uber? It's very simple. They changed and re-engineered the way in which the service was delivered. Taxi Magic had been created as a uh, application for business users uh, for specific taxi companies. Uber was a peer-to-peer -peer platform that absolutely changed the game. Any consumer and any driver could get connected through this platform. I mentioned before, over 100 million uh, active Uber users, over 4 million uh, Uber drivers. This platform was built for scale. The peer-to-peer -peer platform was built for scale. So what happened after that? So we know Uber. We know the scale of Uber. You know, up to uh, 80 billion as a valuation at one point. But what's happened is along has come a new entrant to the market, a new application called Lyft that some of you may be aware of. Lyft which started in 2014, already has taken 36% of that market that Uber has. So Uber had come from nowhere, taken the market, had exponential growth, and now there's somebody coming in and taking their market off them, the improver. So why? What was different? Well, what they did is they focused on the things that people didn't like about Uber. They focused on... Uh, being uh, an ethical business with strong values that customers and users would like. So, fair pay for drivers. Um, also about um, uh, passenger safety and, uh, and the overall experience that those passengers get. You know, one of the things they've done is they've, um, they provide uh, free lifts for uh, university graduates looking for, uh, you know, going for job interviews. So, it's about creating uh, a feeling and a momentum that addresses the things that Uber weren't doing. And what of the future for people like Lyft and Uber? So we're already seeing it. You know, they have these platforms in place. They have the scale. They have the reach to the market. They have the, the models and all the systems there. So like Amazon, they're now creating incremental services that they deliver to market. So Uber Eats, you've probably seen the adverts on, on TV. Uh, Lyft Scooter Hire, uh, Uber Work, and soon to be coming, Uber Air, as we heard earlier on. So the changing world requires a different mindset. There's a lot of opportunity out there, and I've prepared some uh, takeaway points to consider from my presentation. So uh, point one, get started, keep going, and don't stop. You know, this is the direction of travel that uh, uh, you know, we need to work to in the world in which we live. Think big, you know, work out what, uh, what scale you want to hit and the services you want to deliver, but don't start too big. Don't try and boil the ocean. Don't try and do everything at once. Pick something that you can prove and get the buy-in and the momentum behind it. You know, get this momentum going. Encourage innovation. You know, get the right culture. Get people to want to be part of this change. Focus on solving problems and enabling growth. Importantly, you know, we talk about uh, involvement of people and involving staff and creating uh, uh, working groups within the business. But you know, what is absolutely critical is involve customers early. You do not want to be developing things. I think like the, uh, the example of the, the Kodak camera, you don't want to be taking a long time to develop things that are right and miss the market opportunity. 
Don't do things that aren't needed. You know, your customers will guide you. Listen to them. They'll tell you what they want. You know, look at how you can progress with speed, but consider how you can achieve scale into the future. And ultimately, adopt a process of continuous innovation if you want to win in the fast-changing world. So it doesn't matter where you are on your journey and what your aspirations are, whether you're the innovator, the transformer, or the improver. As the enabler, Britannic can help. Thank you very much. <laughs>